<laughs> Welcome to episode 269, as nice. the Yin Yang Twins would say. <laughs> and James doesn't know that we're starting with his rendition of the song as the beginning of the podcast. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> I might kind of, we'll see, we'll see. You um, clicked but record early, not fair. I did, I did. <laughs> so we're going to talk more about like uncommons today we are uh, uh i think as we release the episode uh, as we recorded the episode today on the tuesday morrow's like you know teaser article came out yeah for thunder junction so that's going to be happening soon but we have a little bit of uh downtime here so we're gonna kind of work through some more of these uh uncommons that, you know we're very well organized <laughs> So if you have any show ideas for the next uh, little bit of time before Thunder Junction uh, comes moseying on in, Ooh. yeah, you can reach out to us on uh, Facebook, Discord, uh, X, uh, email. All those links are in the description, so go check it out and uh, get in contact with us. Let us know what you want us to talk about. Yeah, if you got any thoughts about the episode here. Um, like Brian said, we're going to be talking about some uncommon cards and then we'll see where we end up. We got, we got quite a few cards to go over still. Um, maybe some wrap up thoughts. I'm not sure how we're going to organize this as far as episodes go, but yeah, we have, uh, our set information for Thunder Junction should be coming out shortly. Uh, mechanics, we got to do mechanics episode. Normally we do like a limited episode where we talk about the signposts and what the limited environment's going to be. So that's coming up. And then we have a set review episode. So I'm not sure, not sure how the timing's exactly going to work, but if you got any thoughts on any of that, let us know on all the social medias. If you want to support the show, there's a couple ways you can do it. The first is with our TCG player affiliate link, casualtryhard.com slash TCG. And surf on over there and do your shopping and support the show at the same time. We would greatly appreciate that. If you want to support us more directly, patreon.com slash casual tryhard MTG is where you can do that. Uh, patrons get access to our show notes, so you get kind of a sneak peek about what the episode's going to be about. Although anybody that listened to last week's episode is probably going to know what this week's episode is going to be about. Uh, patrons also get access to our pre-show, uh, but an another hour-ish of content out of us every week while we kind of catch up, make sure our equipment works. Occasionally, we have a show like this one where everything just worked and there was no monkeying to do. Um, I'm going to knock on my head because it's made out of wood, just there you in go. case. Old blockhead over there. <laughs> um, but yeah, if any of that sounds good to you, or if you just want to support the show, patreon.com slash casual tryhard MTG. Chip a couple bucks into the pot. Help us out. Yeah. So we're going to kind of continue our, like, impactful slash interesting uncommons mm -hmm. uh in the modern fire design era of mo magic so from war of the spark forward um i think our rules were like kind of saw play some places mm -hmm. of, of, and uh not just like the best black two mana removal spell from each set yeah some it had to right? be a little bit interesting yeah it had to do something as opposed to just like Oh, this is the best card, the best rate for this. It's like, no, it does got to do something more. Yep. So, first up, we have uh, Call of the uh, Death Dweller. Yeah, this was from Ikoria. And I know you and I brewed a little bit around this card, but saw some play other ways as well. Um, this was, we've had a couple versions of this since then, right? Isn't They've gotten cheaper. And they've been in white. Too. Yeah, I was just going to say, we had almost this card in white in uh, Murders, right? And it was one mana. That was only one mana? Th there was a one mana version where it came into play tapped. Yeah. And you were like, is this good enough? And I was like, no. It was good enough. There's like a blue, there's like a blue white Ledger Shredder Monastery Mentor deck yeah. built around, around the fact that you can bring back a Monastery Mentor for one mana. Um. He's and and then there was a there's a two mana one like a one in mm -hmm. the white version yeah so this was interesting because it used the counters so like you got a Set death mechanic, touch yeah yeah death touch counter menace counter and so uh 
this uh, play in uh, my beloved uh, uh, Jun Stormcaller. Yeah, Storm Herald. Storm, Storm Herald, Herald deck. There we go. And then uh, also, it's really, really good with Goblin Chain Whirler. It sure is. Because you give your Goblin Chain Whirler Death Touch, and then you murder their whole board. That's right. For three manas. Yeah, but like this is a, a card that like is like kind of the cheapest version of like it was the cheapest version of this effect. Mm -hmm. But like that, like I need to reanimate something very specific. Yep. It might be little, so I don't want to spend five mana to do it. Right. And this kind of like fits perfectly there. Of like it's cheap enough. It's um, and it, like then it gives you the extra upside of like oh my thing has menace as well. Yeah. I mean, as far as like it being an uncommon, though, I don't know that this is an outlier for like power level because not anymore. Well, I mean, even historically, there's been some banger reanimate spells at uncommon. Like animate dead was an uncommon. Yeah, I mean, but like they didn't know what they were doing when they made <laughs> dead. Well, I mean, look at reanimator though. Like, look at the yeah. legacy reanimator deck. Everything except for reanimate is an uncommon. Is it Exum a common? I think so, yeah. Yeah, like, see, I guess for, like, hey, we're going to, like, do reanimation yeah. weird. This I isn't mean, a power outlier. There yeah. was a, there was certainly a stretch of time in there where, uh, like, the power level was way less. Because if you, if you look yeah. at that stuff, it's, like, all really old cards and then things like this that are newer and, like, yeah, nothing like, in the middle. Yeah, it was, like... Unearth was kind of like the last one, and that was like one mana for CMC two, yeah. right? And then it seemed like we got like one or two four mana, like reanimate anything, yeah. And then everything was like at five. Mm -hmm. And then they've been trying to in recent years, kind of since Call of the Death Dweller. What is the like acceptable mana cost for this spell? Right. If we only let you bring back a three drop. And the problem is, is they keep printing busted three drops that you're just like, oh, I'd love to bring this back for two mana. Well, I mean, one of the one of the cool things about Call of the Death Dweller, as opposed to some of the more recent variants, though, is I think all the other ones only let you tag one creature. Yeah, this is like up to up to three mana value, so you can spread it out like a two and a one. Yeah, well, it helps when you're, if you're on, like, a self-mill plan trying to get stuff in the bin and you don't find your piece, you could bring back, like, two Stitcher suppliers and then yeah, basically like fill guaranteed to find your piece. Yeah. All right, what do we got next? Next we have... Oh, oh what happened here? Hang on. Uh-oh. Oh, no. There we go. Hey, the we Sky did. Turtle. From yeah. Kamigawa. Now there is a lot going on here. And admittedly, like I know we talked about this card a little bit in our set review episode, but I mm -hmm. was not mentally prepared for the amount of play that this card saw and sees. Yeah, so it's what a six five flying word two. Mm -hmm. Your goal is to never cast it. Right. But it, more importantly, it channels and like is a regrowth, mm -hmm. an uncounterable instant speed regrowth. Uh, for two and a green, and then it channels for one and a blue. It is uh, a repulse or like a uh, like a, a bounce spell, yep. like a vapor snag kind of deal. Um, like it fits into the new style of deck that has come about in the last few years. Of like, I'm gonna play stuff that's like CMC eight, but also does a thing at one mana, two mana, three mana, or four mana, yeah, so I can gives you early interaction. So I can discover or cascade or yep. other fill in the blank shenanigan. Yep. Players right? of invention. I, uh Alora uh, oh god. Invasion of Alora. Yep. Kind of thing. Karuga. Um Karuga, exactly. Like just um so I almost bought this card. Maybe I still will. Um so Bryant Cook did a uh, living end video mm -hmm. um after the death of uh violent outburst mm -hmm. using uh blood braid marauder do you know what this card is mm, i feel like as soon as you say it i'm gonna know the card but i don't it is a um 
a rare from Modern Horizons. Okay. It's one on the red for a 1-3. And if you have Delirium, it gets Cascade. Oh. So. He, oh, so this is great there because it's two types. So he had um, the uh, blue-green or something, incubation and something else, like blue green look at the top five put a creature in your hand yeah instant and then five uh, sorcery five mana like pongify something mm -hmm. so that was instant sorcery oh yeah there you go and and then turtle or right. like architects of will yep is two types yep so he was able to get delirium and then play blood brave marauder uh it was a little short in terms of um like, it probably needed a few more things that were, like, multiple types to, like, make it work. Yeah. But, like, Sky Turtle was great. Like, it filled double duty. Did he play uh, Glass Dust? No, he didn't play Glass Dust. Well, I mean, like, that's, he that's just... another thing with multiple types. Yeah. Yeah, like, I think the hard... He, like, the hard thing was, like, getting, like... uh Like, having Artifact would have helped, because, like, you could get Land, Creature, Artifact... Like, off of, like, what's it called? Um, uh, like, Architects of Will? Yeah. It's just hard getting that fourth type, because, like, land was easy, creature was oh, easy, I and see. then, like, creature enchantment was easy-ish with turtle. Yeah. Creature artifact was easy, but you had to kind of have both right. your, like, both of either turtle and architect, or you had to have, like, the incubation mm -hmm. or like uh like force of negation or, or something like that to get like that fourth type was was hard yeah. but like not only does this like matter like for you know its channel abilities mm -hmm. it also matters for its types and like when, and when you get it back whatever cheaty way you get it back it's hard to kill yeah the board too and it's it just, just kind of yeah, it's just like big and just like difficult and like it's like three cards. It's mm -hmm. a seven mana threat. It's a poorly costed regrowth and a poorly costed bounce spell. Hang on. A card just popped into my head. Okay. I want to put it on screen. Okay. I gotta put it on screen. That. I gotta find um, a picture of it. But like like, this is kind of when they were designing cards that just were like, what if the card did everything? Yeah. Do you remember this guy? Oh, uh, uh, did it not come up? Oh, no, I have something in the wrong spot. I don't see anything. Yeah, I don't think it came up. Hang on. Just send it to me. Just, like, send it in chat. This is the content people crave. Yeah. Oh, it didn't come what up because I didn't actually save it. I just drug it over. Hang on. Give me a okay. Second. Okay. Well, the audience wants to know what it is here. Coming. Survey said. I mean, I got tired. Oh, Civic Sky's well aware. Like, this was a card that unironically saw play in constructed formats and so is basically this, but worse. <laughs> like, so, way worse. So, for those of you who don't know, Civic Sky Swallower used to be like a reanimation target. Mm hmm. It's seven mana for a six six flying trample and it has shroud. Yep. So like once it got there, it was just like beat down time. Yep. Well it was there forever. You couldn't interact with it. Yeah. But like Sky Turtle is seven mana, same casting cost for a very similar power and toughness with evasion and protection. A way to make it harder to, to uh, deal with. Yeah. But also, it's like if Simic Sky Sweller was also a uh, a, a bounce spell and a regrowth, uncounterable. Yeah, and yeah. you could just put it in your graveyard, kind of whenever you wanted. Right. That's kind, a very good point. Kind of nuts. I don't know why I didn't think of that when uh, when we were talking about Colossal Sky Turtle. Probably because yeah. the last time anybody thought about Simic Sky Sweller was like a decade ago, 2017 or something. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I have one than of that. these. It's like. It's the, like, 47th card in your reanimator sideboard. Yeah. <laughs> but it's there just in case. Yep. 
I think this tournament we need uh Simic Sky Swallower. Oh, in his foot in his uh flavor text is from is from Momar Big. It is. Look at that. Yep. All right. Next up, we have uh one of like three cards that is player playable from Aftermath. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's Copper Coat Vanguard. Mm-hmm. For the text on this card, it doesn't feel like it should be an uncommon. It's right. a two mana two two that gives every other human plus one plus O oh, and ward one. Yeah, the like the Lord effect, I can kind of see it uncommon because mm-hmm. we we have been getting a lot of these. Now the ones that we have been getting at uncommon, I don't think have been tribes that are well, we don't call them tribes anymore. Types. Types. That are as popular or as large as humans. Like we got a two mana squirrel lord and we got a two mana like fungus lord. Um, but neither of those types are as well supported as humans is. Um, but the part of this card that really stuck out to me as being kind of above uncommon, like punching above its weight, is the ward. Like that's kind of nuts on two mana yeah. uncommon. Like a like curve of one drop Thalia into this. Yeah. Right? Like your stuff just doesn't die. Right. And like the fact that it, like if it gave all of them ward, no pump, mm-hmm. fine. If it gave if it pumped, no ward, fine. But the fact that it does both is like really impressive. And like a lot of what like the mono white aggressive decks need is just like I'm like an anthem. I give you just that little bit of like protection yeah. to like just have like your opponent play off curve for like a turn or two and then they're dead. Yep. Um and then Courier's briefcase. This is seen play in like standard as like a ramp piece. This sees play like in a lot of weird places. Um, I've seen it's, this pop up in lists that I was like, why are they playing Courier's Briefcase? So, a million years ago, having Wooberg mana to do a thing yeah. was, like, hard. Mm-hmm. But now, like, especially in, like, older formats, mana is so good, it's like, whatever. Yeah, trivial. And the fact that it's an artifact that makes a creature mm-hmm. allows weird stuff to happen. So, like, with uh, Transmogrify... Yeah, decks that want creatures but don't want to actually play creatures. Yeah, like, I don't want a creature here, but I do want, like, a creature for shenanigans. Yeah. And this kind of fills it. And it's like, do you, would you like me to ramp? Right, because it does that as right. well. It's just this weird, like, I'm a creature for Transmogrify Luca. Mm-hmm. I am a creature that is a speed bump in your, like, ramp deck. Right. Right, like buy you a turn so you can get like I buy you a turn of damage and buy you a turn with ramp. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, on turn five or oh, six, man. maybe Is you play a chase just time walk. <laughs> it's green time walk. <laughs> and then like in the late game you draw it and you're just like, I guess I will like cash this in for seven cards. Or yeah, for three cards. For three cards. Except seven main of the turn you do it, but like it's yeah. three cards, like it's not terrible. Like, it's just, it's kind of like, you know, Fable the Mirror Breaker, Mm -hmm. where none of the individual things seem that powerful, but like the package together. Yeah. And again, this might be another like kind of takeaway from like a lot of these cards is a lot of these cards are like multiple cards in one. Yeah. Do a bunch of different things. Greater than some of its parts. Yeah. That well... You know, none of the rates are great. None of the rates are like terrible, mm-hmm. and just kind kind of works out that like, hey, this works. This ends up uh being being a good card because of the flexibility. Yeah, I mean, if you're building a deck, obviously you want like best in slot, which is typically most efficient. But mm-hmm. you know, if you're just at rate instead of above rate, but more flexible. Like, a lot of times, that's a better card. And, like, I think some of the older formats, um, there there is a little bit of slowing down. Mm-hmm. Where, like, you know, 
with Modern Horizons 1, we were like, oh, Yawgmoth and Urza are super good, mm -hmm. but, like, you can't play four drops in Modern that don't, like, win the game on the spot. Right. And now, like... Urza's banned Yawgmoth and Yawg is one of the best decks in the format. Is, is Urza banned? I, I thought, thought that so. Urza... I thought just all the stuff around Urza got banned. Oh, maybe. So, I, like, I thought Urza actually took a ban. I think I'll find out. Um, he got banned in Commander? Or like 1v1 Commander or something. I don't know. I could be wrong. But like, now Yagma's one of the best decks in the format. Yeah. We we had a like stretch where like Omnath could get played. Yep. And so like a card that might be not optimally efficient but mm -hmm. gives you that flexibility has more room yeah yeah it's it's legal it's legal everywhere okay it says okay not banned like, anywhere like there was what did they ban oh it was um they banned mox opal and they ma banned the the one man uh uh astrolabe uh, yeah those were both so, because of Urza. yeah those are those both were yeah but like you get a bunch of these cards that might not be the most efficient, but are like good yeah. enough. All right. Next up, we have uh, Faithful, Faithful Looting at Home. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, honestly, this, like looking at it, it looks like this card would be way worse than Faithless Looting, but it's not. Like the, yeah, it's the color requirement is unfortunate because blue white isn't really the colors where that effect is super useful. Mm -hmm. um, but this card has way overperformed, in my opinion. Imagine if it was like reckless mending. Yeah. And it was like red blue. Mm -hmm. And it was like draw two, discard two, and like, I don't know, not even like a life swing or anything. Yeah. And then flashback one blue red. Probably sees play in modern. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right? like, does. Like, I mean, is I mean, it that's charm? all like any Phoenix deck wants to do. Yeah, like, is it charm is like on the borderline and pioneer in some of those decks? Yeah, and like that would be like better or like on par with is it charm? Mm -hmm. Um, now to your yeah. point about the life though, like that is oddly important for this card mm -hmm. in particular though, because like where this has seen a bunch of play is when you're when you're playing like a controlly deck looking to find an answer and you need a little bit of time to find that answer. Like that two life is oddly relevant. Same with like, in kind of in the, on the flip side of that is like, there was a, we had a period of time where we like Esper Grease Fanged. Mm -hmm. And Esper Grease Fang, like that two mana, or that two life yep. was like, could buy you the turn to find your Grease Fang and get your angels and like stabilize. Right. So like, it does matter, mm -hmm. but yeah, like blue white, like you. I don't know about you, but usually when I see a card that's like a blue white gold card, I think like oh, control card, mm -hmm. and like not like purely a control card, right? But like does kind of see play. Uh, I have in, certainly like, seen this pop up in control lists mm -hmm. though. I have as well. But like again, like you know, you can think Sky Turtle and then Faithful Mending are kind of like takes on like old cards where they're like, well, let's just tweak the knobs a little bit because like this effect is interesting or good or whatever yeah and like honestly the knobs aren't even that tweaked on faithful mending like it, no, it's, it's like a mana a more company. on the front end but the same cost on the back end and mm -hmm. they added two life points and made it an instant yeah like they didn't change it that that much yeah uh, um, honestly, if it wasn't for the blue white casting cost, like this might even be better than Faithless Looting. Yeah, like I don't know what like I think blue red might be better. Yeah. Or but like, yeah. Otherwise, like it's if it was like one in the, one in the blue mm -hmm. and flashback like two in a blue, like you probably play it. Mm -hmm. Like it'd probably be like a staple in Pioneer. And would be up to no good in modern, yes. at least at some on some level. Yep. All right. Uh, next one is has been sent to the shadow realm, but it geological appra appraiser, mm -hmm. uh, bloodbraid elf at home. Well, I mean, coming from the perspective of 
looking at these as uncommon so like bread blood braid wasn't uncommon mm -hmm. so i don't know that power level wise this is outside the realm of possibility no no and what like i mean blood is like braid was better than geological appraiser yeah like blood braid had haste yeah and like it is i think blood braid is better if you're using discover and cascade to do the same thing right which is find a very specific three drop yeah but if you are um using them kind of how they were designed for value of like just spin the wheel yeah. like maybe discover could be a no because like the cash trigger is better but right. like the fact that they like printed this card and like it spawned a deck mm -hmm. in pioneer to the point where it got banned right. and that deck a deck is still i played against that deck today i ran up against it over the weekend and i was just like what are you doing yeah, uh, I, I forgot. That, I forgot that deck still existed. They did something, and I was like, "Wow, that's a." I don't. I don't even remember what it was, but I was like, "That's a play I haven't seen in a minute." Like, what? What are they? What are they trying to do over there? Yeah, uh, I actually had my opponent beat me through two damping spheres. Wow. Yeah, they uh, played Contorius, like made a token next turn, down ticked it, mm -hmm. and hit a uh, spark double yep, and then down ticked it and hit a spark double oh no <laughs> I was like, are you, like paying like two mana and then down ticked again and hit a spark double oh, yeah, like, right. are you serious they found um, them all they found them all but uh yeah like geological appraiser like I think we uh, will not see a like I think cascade slash discover might be like rocketing up the storm scale probably you can't, you can't do this like reasonably well so i guess this is kind of on topic even though it's not necessarily about uncommons but about like power level mm -hmm. stuff um and actually it kind of talks to the same points that we were making a little bit in the pre-show if you remember a conversation from mm -hmm. pre-show um but when when wizards can make sets for a format, like what does the storm scale even mean anymore? This is very true. Like, like if you're making a a modern set, you can put storm cards in. Right. You can put cascade cards in. Mm -hmm. You know, if give it a couple of years when you're making a Pioneer Horizon set, oh. there is. Well, I mean, how realistically, how far off are we? Um. Not very. Like yeah. I, they, they've, they've kicked around. They, they talked openly about the idea. Yeah. And, uh, if once they bleed the commander players and the modern players dry, yeah, there's only one place got, to go. There's only you got, you got to get like those pioneer, those pioneer people. Yep. Twenty twenty six will be the year of pioneer. <laughs> All the pro tours will be pioneer. Yeah. Um, they'll release release eighty five pioneer products. Yep. They'll make it so that every store has to have a Pioneer event every day. Yeah, it'll be amazing. Yeah. But, I mean, but, when they do that, then, you know, in a couple of years, the power level, like, power levels only go up as cards are added to a card pool. They don't go down. So, Pioneer as a whole is only ever going to get more powerful. Mm-hmm. You know, there may come a point where they're like, okay, yeah, Cascade, Pioneer, let's go. Yeah, like no problem. Dredge do this. Pioneer, let's go. Yes. Yeah. Free grave troll. <laughs> uh, all right. What do we got next on our list here? Gleeful Demolition. Um like, what was the card that this card was trying to be? Uh, oh gosh. Cold Delta Rebirth. <clears throat> yes, That's thank you. Was. Yeah. Yep. Um it's like Kaldotha Rebirth with Upside because right. you can just blow up your opponent's artifact with it. Mm -hmm. um, getting three bodies out of one card is very good. Well, it's two cards. <clears throat> it's, eh, kinda. Like, I was gonna say with the number of, like, creatures that they have printed that make Thing, yeah. it is so not that... 
it's a card plus though like it's never going to be just yes, a card yeah it, it can only ever be like a card plus tempo or a card plus card yeah yeah but like when Kadaltha rebirth was printed it was like sack an artifact land or like mm -hmm. play a land or play a spell and then like eat the tempo right or like play Memnite or Ornithopter and get your three one ones. Right. And you were down like that whole card. And now it's like play a one mana one two. Sack the like detritus that came with it. Right. Or a one or a one mana one a one mana one one that pinged them for one. Yeah. Again, detritus. Yep. Right? Like you just like it's very different in a world where like there are like multiple one drops that also make a friend. Mm -hmm. Well, so I mean, if I remember correctly, called out the rebirth was sacrifice, right? Not destroy. Uh, yes, I think you're right. I mean, that's another big difference because this is destroy, so you can hit a dark steel and kill, still keep your dark steel. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure no. called out was sacrifice. No, I'm, now I'm going to get a look. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, As an additional cost to, to cast yeah. this sacrifice an artifact. Yeah. So like I guess the trade off is is this is targeted. Mm -hmm. So like they can blow it up underneath it. Mm -hmm. But upside is is you can blow up their chalice on zero. Yep. Or their like important artifact. Yep. Whatever. It like you just have their blow up your smuggler's copter. Your smuggler's copter, whatever, right? Like yep. oh I had this main deck artifact hate. Mm -hmm. Neat. I guess I get to win now. It's like, oh, <laughs> cool. This is unfortunate for me. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's basically just better than Cold Author Rebirth. Mm hmm. And. And like, if it gets countered, you don't have to set the artifact stays on the battlefield. Like, right. There, there, there are different things. But yep. yeah, no, it's, it's just that like, it's not a card you expected them to like reprint, mm -hmm. and it's just like, oh no, here you can have you can have eight of these in timeless, you can have eight of these in modern. Mm -hmm. Just figure out how to make it work, and it's like, I'll just play all the cool creatures you gave me that make one thing. I figured it out. Wax some bushes. Exactly. All right, now we have the uh, cyborg crutch, the best <laughs> mind. The best mind rot in the history of mind rots. Oh yeah, by by leaps and bounds. Um, Go boy. Also, I think the best artwork for a mind rot as well. Yeah. Not I so my is. students did this on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Some people it, definitely uh, went blank. Went blank. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, incidental graveyard hate. Mm -hmm. Like, almost every black mid range deck in Pioneer is like. I've got three cards I don't need. I don't have anything good to bring in. I guess I'll bring in Go Blank. Right. And which, like, like you mentioned earlier, it's a card that like serves multiple roles that mm -hmm. are not costed like outside the realm of possibility. Yeah. Like Go Blank is a... Sorry. Uh, Mind Rot is, has been three mana. Forever. Forever. So they just took Mind Rot and they just tacked a one mana ability, maybe two, Exile a Graveyard. Like, Tormod's yeah. Crypt is the gold standard of one. Right. No, or, sorry, zero. Is none. It's zero. It's none. Right? And then, like, I feel like, like, and then, like, Soul Guide Lantern is one. Yep. Um, so, like, it's I think most of them are one, like Tormod scripts again, like the outlier from like a million years ago, mm -hmm. but not so outlier outliery that they don't print it pretty frequently. Right. But like realistically, like this should have maybe cost four mana, like um, three and a black. Well, I think four mana is too much. I don't know that it would see any play at four mana. Yeah, like this is like we can't we can't have half manas, right? Maybe right. it's a three and a half mana card. Well, you, you four... just wait. They'll find a way to give us half a mana on a card. 
where like four is too much and is unplayable. Yeah. And three might be a little bit too low for the fact that it's two to three cards, right? It's like yeah. a two for one. But if their graveyard really mattered to them, Could now it's more. maybe a three for one, right? You or like, more. <clears throat> yeah, like you, you know, if you go blank a Phoenix player, right. now they've like stuck a bunch of treasure cruises in their hand. And now you're just, they're like, oh, now like three of my cards don't work. Yeah, and maybe you take the Phoenix out of their graveyard. Yeah, so you like get a lot more out of it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, it's just like one of those cards that, again, like they forgot to tack the cost of the extra thing. Mm -hmm. And then this was like a $2 uncommon for a while mm -hmm. or more. Yep. And like you said, it just kind of fits into basically any sideboard, which yes. Mind Rat has really never done. And then we have Haywire Might, another yeah. card that's a uh, multiple multiple types. It gets to the graveyard pretty easy. It does. Um, so like, gains you life, mm -hmm. and also like is artifact and enchantment hate. Yep. Specifically in exile. So I don't know. Goodbye, Darksteel Citadel. Mm -hmm. Random other like, um. Uh, artifacts that matter now it has the non creature artifact because like that would just be like brutal because yeah. like yeah, this was. this set was I think supposed to be legal when like Kamigawa was still legal is that right or was it was it supposed to have rotated mm, I think it's supposed to be legal that. anyway like could you imagine like you play patchwork automaton and then they just tag it with this and you're just like <laughs> oh <sighs> yeah fine um but, like, it's enchantment hate you can cord for, mm -hmm. right? Um, you can get it with Urza Saka. Yep. It just has all these little, like, interesting use cases. Yep. It that... gains life when it dies. It self-sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Incidental hate for artifacts and enchantments. Yeah, again, it's just one of those things that just says, like, I'm going to do six things. Yep. And you don't, like... And a lot of these cards, you don't see all of the things that they do until you start playing with them, which makes them like hard to evaluate because a lot of the things are are small and subtle, right? And then you're like, oh, that, oh, the fact that that's exile is a big deal, or like, oh man, like I would have lost that game if it wasn't for the two life that this gave me. Yeah. Well, also this costs two mana. Like if you're gonna do it all at once, it's two mana, mm -hmm. and that's like. Naturalize? Just, yeah, that's what the effect costs. Yeah, it's just what, that's a good point. What the cost is. And on top of that, you get two life and a body. Yeah. And an artifact in your graveyard. Yeah, it just does all these things that, like, naturalize could never do. Right. All right. And then we have, oh, well, this is the wrong side, but. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's fine. I've, I've, uh, not really ever looked at this dude on the back before. And I'm like, oh, he's kind of got like an anime vibe. Like, okay, I've never looked at this art that closely. Yeah, it's big. We have um, Kamano Faces of Kakazan, mm -hmm. uh, which flips into, uh, as you can see on the screen here, etchings of Kak uh, Kamano. Yeah, I don't know why so, I the wrong side. But... Um, it's a one mana card that pings your opponent for one, mm -hmm. puts a counter on something, and then flips into a 2-2. Two -two. Two two so, two two is upside. upside yeah. So with and and has haste. Yep. So, it is one mana for four damage, roughly, because you get one from the ping, one from the counter, and then two from it if yeah. it connects. But typically, it's at least shock. Like the yes. the one damage is always going to happen. The extra damage from the second chapter usually happens, and then. The two damage from like this guy cracking in doesn't always happen, but the the exile clause has come up like when I've played this card mm -hmm. way more than I thought it would. And also like the counter, just the fact that like two drops are kind of bigger than they used to be. Yeah. And then like getting to like 
so it's easier to like outsize your opponent's two drops for sure with that plus one plus one counter yep. and like just make it hard to block and mm-hmm. like sometimes it's like five damage because your two two wouldn't have been able to get in but now it's a three three and they can't block it yeah and so now you're taking a bolt a, a, a ping plus three damage that wasn't going to get in right and like you probably get this is probably two cards mm-hmm. right like because like if i gave you red deal a point put a plus one plus one counter on something that's pretty good pretty good yep and then red for a two two haste with upside pretty good yeah. i mean even if it is on like suspend two yeah completely fine. right so like this is both of those cards yep all right i mean that's that's a whole nother card that we didn't even put on this list i don't know that it saw a ton of play but i loved that card that uh one? the ronin oh yeah yeah, yeah. The one the, mana two two haste that goes mm-hmm. back to your hand yep it just kind of does like has like triggers all of your stuff yep. it's currently in the cube yeah for like all the like artifact etb cast an artifact mm-hmm. things like it's perfect for those kind of things yep then we have kind of a blast from the past here yeah all the way back from throne of eldraine mystical dispute so this was part of a cycle where it was like self color hate mm-hmm. and like this one's just like kind of nutty yeah and maybe it falls outside of the like not just like a good removal spell kind of like thing but like two in a blue counter anything any spell if they pay three so in like kind of the first like five turns of the game it's just cancel Mm -hmm. right but like if your opponent's paying blue it just costs one mana yeah which is and so you yeah so then you just have like one mana counter target spell for the first like five turns of the game right right and again going back to like cards that like uh don't actually play at their mana value Mm -hmm. oh man i wish i could have a card that i could have as a counter spell in my cascade deck (laughs) it's like oh cool here's a thing that says three on it has a three mana value that has never really been paid played for three mana ever yeah it's like oh thank you for fixing my problem Um, also kind of another theme about these cards that we've talked about is like the the hidden ways in which they're good Mm -hmm. and this card when you look at it you would think it plays exactly like you just described where the first few turns of the game it's really good at tagging a spell it's especially good if it's tagging a blue spell but this is kind of like your ace in the hole to win a counter war like this card just ends a counter war yeah absolutely like you're going back and forth and you're like oh you tapped low have you yeah haha and like their only way to like beat you is to oftentimes have their own mystical dispute right but like yeah you're just like counter it and they're like okay well i'll I'll counter that and then you're like okay mystical dispute your thing and they're like oh okay i guess i lose now yep yeah the fact that it's one mana like how many times you've been like okay the only card that gets me here is mystical dispute and you like play your spell and you're like oh i guess i guess they had it (laughs) i guess it was mystical dispute yeah and like like you know three mana much like with um like no more lies is so hard to play around yeah Right, like you can't be like I'm not gonna cast my blue spell until turn five. <laughs> it's like my by my blue two drop. Now I have three mana to pay for mystical dispute. Yeah, like no, that doesn't that doesn't work. Like they killed you with like idiot flyers or they comboed you out or something. Like you died. Right. Um. This card have, was a mistake. Yeah. Well, the first of a couple of these, I, I put at least one more on the list here that we're going to talk about at some point but uh like these i think we can lump a lot of these uncommon walkers all in together um narset ashiok mm-hmm. um kiora mm-hmm. or the spark uncommon three mana walkers have all kind of punched above their weight 
And like, it shouldn't be surprising that when we're talking about specifically uncommon power level, like these are going to show up because there, there is no precedent for uncommon planeswalkers. Um, but a lot of these were way better than people thought they were. Yeah. I mean, we had the, remember the Chandra like set that we had yeah, like, oh, the yeah. Chandra uncommon planeswalker. Yep. Um, but like, I think that since these were like at kind of the like birth of fire design, mm -hmm. they didn't realize how big of a fire they were starting <laughs> with them. And like, I think the thing that makes all three of those planeswalkers that we talked about um, kind of tick is the fact that they're like statics are an enchantment you would play. Yeah. Right. Like Narset's like, you know, your opponent can't draw more than one turn. If you stapled that to like, and if it was an enchantment that said that, that also said, look at the top four, put one in your hand, mm -hmm. you would play that card. Right. This lets you do that twice. Twice. Right. And then still be left with the enchantment that makes it so your opponent can't draw extra cards. Right. Um, like Ashiox, you can't search the, the, your opponent can't search their library. There are many ma and then exile their graveyard. There are many mm -hmm. matchups that you would just play that card out of your sideboard. Right. Like the, the I think the thing with Narset and Ashiok, and this is going to be kind of a weird take, but they, if all it was was three mana, the static ability, mm -hmm. I think both of those are ever so slightly overcosted. Like Agreed. I, if it wasn't for the loyalty ability, you wouldn't just play three mana enchantment. Opponent can't draw more than one card each turn or opponent can't search their mm -hmm. library or whatever. But with Kiora, like that is the rate for that. That is the rate for that. It's colossal footsteps. I mean, there's a bunch of different versions. Yeah. Right? There's a bunch yeah, of, like yeah. that is just the rate for her ability. And yeah, like that's kind of weird to think about because I think Narset and Ashiok have both seen more play than Kiora. Yeah. Well, they have that the, might be like, debatable recently, but yeah, well, like Kiora was really good in mono green and not a lot else. Yeah, but like they both like kind of follow the Planeswalker test, like uh, mm -hmm. Narset and Ashiok, which is they are good if they're the only card on the battlefield. Oh yeah. Right, where like Kiora requires like Kiora plus thing, and you can draw Kiora in the wrong order. Yeah, right. You can play like three, four power things, and then draw your Kiora, right. and it's less good. But like Narset, just making it so your opponent can't draw, mm -hmm. and being like a three mana dig through time on like layaway. Yeah, it's is uh, reasonable, and like Ashiok being like graveyard hate plus search hate. Plus, like, sometimes a win condition. Right. Like, all kind of, like, wrapped up together. Right? It builds 20 cards. Mm -hmm. Like, if, if you're, like, in a, like, Nothing. slow... Con if you're in a slow control mirror... Right. Like, that's going to, like, win you the game. Or, I mean, you would bring it in against somebody that's up to graveyard shenanigans. Like, if they're self-milling, like, 20 cards um, is a lot. I don't know if you saw on the Pro, Pro Tour... There were Phoenix decks that main decked like two Ashiox for the mirror. Wow. That's that was how they mirror that was their mirror breaker was they had Ashiox in their main deck. Crazy. And it's like, oh, okay. Perhaps Phoenix is a problem for the format. But what do I know? <laughs> right. What do I if, if we're to be like, we got a main deck Ashiok? Yeah. Um but yeah, like, but if it was an enchantment that was the static ability plus like one hit off of the one activation, mm -hmm. like, I think that card's playable. Yeah. Like, not as good, but, like, since you get, like, two or five off of Ashiok or whatever. Right. If it was, like, your opponents can't search libraries, mill eight, exile their, li their graveyard. True. That card would probably be playable. Yep. I mean, we, we've we kind of seen it with, with uh, uh, Go Blank. Yeah. All right. It is true. Uh... Modern powerhouse, Neshoba Brawler. Wild. 
No, no, no. That's wild Nacatl. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry. This my, is this my is mistake. a this is a different this is a different cat. Thank you very much. The different um, green cat. N- different green cat. Yeah. yeah. Um, like the fact that this sees modern play and is like, like I guess it's propped up from the triumphs. Yeah. But like I never looked at this card and thought like, oh yeah, we're gonna see this in modern. Right. Well, right? I never mean, in a million also years. fits into uh, the ley line, right? Mm-hmm. Like the, like there is there. I've seen some versions of like leyline, leyline zoo. Yeah, leyline domain. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but yeah, like just like wild to think like, oh, this card is is good enough. Mm-hmm. Like being a consistently a two mana five three can get the job done. Like it'd be really unbelievable if it was like a star four where it couldn't get bolted. Oh yeah. But like Star Three is just like like it's really good, but like it still has that like big weakness to like one of the most commonly played removal spells. Yeah. Still a little but fragile. Just a just fragile enough. Yeah. Uh it trades with uh an opposing wild Nicodle. <laughs> um But yeah, it is kind of crazy that like just it tramples this, like, over though. Yes, you think you get a couple in there. But like again, another card that like just like the drawback or the setup cost to make it good isn't really a cost. Yeah, it's trivial. Especially, these days. especially in a world of triumphs. Yeah, like shock, uh, fetch triumph, fetch shock. This mm-hmm. it's like oh, okay, and you're there. Yeah, and, it, and you know it's kind of like uh, we had talked a while back about territorial kavu, and you're like, oh, this will win like a a modern event at some point. So I'm gonna buy a bunch of them, and yeah. like I, I'm sure it has. Yet. It hasn't paid up shorts won some stuff, but like this is kind of territorial kavu, like right, uh, five through eight, mm-hmm. with like a little bit less text because it's an uncommon, but still does the thing. Yep. And we have Outland Liberator, um, another card that's kind of latest in a series of things like this. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been seeing them pop up more frequently lately. Uh, there was. So we had a white one not too long ago, right? Uh, Cathar something or other. Yeah. The the, the three one flash. Yep. Pay one. Uh, Cathar Commando. Yep. We did it. it was Cathar Commando. Uh, but like uh, like Outland Liberator, I've seen it like in Legacy sideboards, like on on the battlefield in Legacy, hmm. right? Because if it flips, then it's just eating their encha- enchantments whenever it attacks, right? Or deals damage. Right, as opposed to being like a one shot thing, it's just like becomes Trigon Predator. Yeah, like this is pretty tough to flip though, I think, right? Like it in is. a format like Legacy, where there's mm-hmm. so much cheap interaction, can trips, whatever. But like the fail case is like Rex Age, but with like a better right. creature type. Right. Well, maybe not better. No. Different, right? Like you'd play this in like some like green and taxes kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Where like, you know, Rex uh Rex Age you would play in Elves. Um, elves. But, like, if you have, like, Cavern of Souls on human, yep. right, like, you get to get this down as opposed to, uh, you know, in your in your human's deck as opposed to having to play, like, Rex Age. Right. Or, oh, gosh, what was he? He's, he's been so replaced by this, but what is his name? Um, Loran? The, no, the green-white, uh, like, uh, Green white two two from like Alora block. You pay one. Oh, sack uh, Pride it. Mage. Yes, Krasali Pride Mage. Yeah. yeah, like that used to be like this card, but it was gold. Well, we had Loran too, which is just Rex Sage with like an extra ability. Yeah, in in the human subtype. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah but like Outland Liberator again, like it's just like shown up and like. I know in standard, I definitely had a few games that were like playing it some like fringe werewolves deck where they played this and it flipped into a three three because I didn't have like I had a tap land on turn two. Yeah, and it's just like, oh, I can't beat this super three three now. <laughs> Great. Yep. Wonderful. And then we have a card that we talked about briefly already. Ah, patchy. Yep, patchwork automaton. Like you. The fact that Ward is diet hexproof, 
Mm -hmm. like makes you feel like Ward is bad. Right. But like on the play, the fact that like your patchwork automaton is pretty safe, like that, you know, you're going to get one hit in. Yeah. Maybe two before they have the ability to kill it. And it's just growing. Like it, it's a way to give like fringy artifact decks a way to like steal a game that they otherwise wouldn't be in. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, like this artifact deck is like 40% against the field. Right. But now I put Patchwork Automaton in it, and it's like 45 or 50% against the field because there's just games where I go like Patchwork, patchwork. Ornithopter, Ornithopter. Yeah, or like patchwork into like patchwork one drop, and now yeah. you're just like, well, take four, and then next turn you're gonna take seven. Right. Good luck. And it's like, oh, I guess I'm, I guess I can't beat this. I can kill one of them, but it takes my whole turn. Yeah. And you kill with the other. Like Ward in general has played a lot better than I was expecting mm -hmm. to. Which yeah, kind of think... begs the question like, maybe Hexproof was better than we thought it was, also. Yeah. Like, I th hexproof was really good. Yeah, and then, like maybe we didn't play it enough. Yeah, like well, that's just, more like, what I meant. Yeah, like just like the hexproof deck was like hexproof creature, and then like garbage. Yeah, like could we have played like Jund with like hexproof three drops? Well, I mean, for a while, you know Jund I mean? was playing um, Throne as like the four drop du jour. Like there was a time when he was yeah. he was in sideboards. I know I spent a whole lot of money for mine before they were reprinted and are now worthless. Womp womp. Yeah. But like, no, just like, like just generic, like, like, are there just, you know, like, would it have been better to play like, you know, a like hexproof creature and just like turn off your opponent's removal? Yeah. Or like make your opponent like, I, I don't think it's right, but I've been playing black, red, um, Vampires has like been my pioneer deck of choice, mm -hmm. and I took out like the bitter triumphs mm -hmm. for I like for Shieldred's Edict. Yeah, just I've like seen a lot for of the doing that, just for the like. Well, if they like ripper me, yeah, I have a way to answer it and not die. Right, and like you know maybe removal would have changed. Yeah, uh, because of like that, but like the fact that you can go like patchwork have like an instant clock. They can get too big to like block and then eat their whole turn, just like lets you play like fringy, goofy decks that mm -hmm. would otherwise be awful. Yep. And then not be awful, yep. which is sometimes good in a format to kind of have like a kind of like for lols fun deck. Mm -hmm. Is there anything about this card that screams I shouldn't have been an uncommon or I wouldn't historically have been an uncommon? Uh, I think it's, like, the fact that it's whenever you cast an artifact spell, like, if it was, like, the first one each turn, or this yeah. trigger only triggers once, but the fact that you can, like, go patchwork and then cast three one-drops and have a 4-4 have a four -four yeah. on turn three in the is, protection like... As well, I think. Yeah, in the protection. Like, it's just... Again, like, I think it's fine with, like, just the second ability, the counters ability. Yep. Or like Ward and this only triggers once each turn mm -hmm. might have been okay. But like kind of putting them together kind of pushes it over the top where again it's in that like modern gray area where it's not a card that feels like a rare historically. Right. But it's also too good to be an uncommon. For sure. Then we have Prosperous Innkeeper. Uh, yeah. The latest addition to Soul Sister y type decks that also ramps you. Um, another card that I don't think we mentioned during our set review episode as being something to look out for, but has popped up in a whole slew of decks. I think the fact that the. The treasure was more valuable mm -hmm. than we thought. Like across the board. Yeah, the if like kind of thinking of oh, the treasure makes it only cost one mana. Yeah. As opposed to thinking it's a two mana ramp spell. 
Right. That fixes that, your mana. That fixes your mana and lets you combo off. Yep. Or lets you get four triggers for your stupid angels deck or whatever. Right. But again, like just a lot of these just come down to like they throw enough text on cards mm-hmm. that like they hit combinations where like I don't even think they realized it was like, oh, this card's like busted. Right. Way better than they expected. Yeah. Um and like it, it's kind of an outlier just because Soul Sisters do tend to be lower lower rarities. Um mm-hmm. I I'm sure there are some that are higher rarities, but I can't think of any off the top of my head. Right um now. oh gosh. Uh Anoch Champion. Oh yep. Yep. Okay. Uh and that's white white, but like Soul Warden is white, Essence Warden is for a green there's another one that's like white from like Zendikar block. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there's been a few of them. Um, yeah, but most of them, especially at the lower rarities, just have the Soul Sister text. They don't have the like you. They don't do anything the, else. The added ramp, the added color fixing. What yeah. Have you. All right. So I kind of put three cards here. And I went with Spike Field Hazard, mm-hmm. Pangled Florahedron, and Gerari, Gerari Disruption. Easy for or you to say. Yeah, d- no. Gerari? <laughs> not going to happen. Anyway, like, these are all cards that have, like, shown up from time to time, particularly Spike Field Hazard and Disruption. Yeah. Where, like, they let you play, like, an extra spell, like, in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. But, like, if you are desperate... They are also your land drop. Right. And the fact that they give you that flexibility. Mm-hmm. Tangled Floor Hadron showed up in some like elementals lists and stuff for kind of the same thing where you're like, well, in the early game, I can play it as a creature. Or if I like need like my second land, I can play this on one and then play another land untapped on two. Yep. And then in the late game, it gave you all your elementals type old things. Right. Right. But, like, the fact that these cards, again, your land drop sometimes, and then a removal spell or a counter spell, like, Sensor saw a lot of play. And still, still does. does. Yeah. And Deroy Disruption is Sensor where, like, how many times do people cycle a Sensor to try to hit a land? Mm-hmm. This is a Sensor you have already cycled and hit your land drop with. Right. Right? Now, it doesn't get to cycle you into a spell in the late game. But on turn two, on turn two, on turn three, where you need that land drop, it's that. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's not 100% the case for something like Spike Field Hazard. Um, Spike Field Hazard, I think, sees more play in aggressive decks than it does, Mm -hmm. like, controly style decks. But But sometimes they're like a one of in, like, a Phoenix, right? Like, Mm -hmm. the fact that, like, your hands where you're, like... I can keep this hand because it had a spike field hazard in it. And if this was a shock, yeah, I wouldn't want it. But then like on turn six, when you draw it and you didn't need a land and you needed a spell trigger. Yeah. Right. Like the fact that you have that flexibility. And I think like the theme that we're seeing is like flexibility, kind of the ability to be multiple cards and do multiple things. Mm hmm. And that's really like the last, you know, few years we've seen that like kind of design philosophy. Yeah. Uh, and and then the most expensive uncommon I've ever seen <laughs> uh, in person. Yeah. Uh, Aether Gust and Veil of Summer. Yeah, both of these. Um, Aether Gust. Mm-hmm. I, I know we've told the story on the show here before when we were at Grand Prix Oco. There were vendors selling Aether Gust for, was it $8? Yeah, and like, I think uh, Veil of Summers for similar. Uh, I think Veil of Summers were more. I, I, Maybe, yeah. I'm reasonably sure I'd seen Veil of Summers for like 10 or $12. Mm-hmm. Um, so, again, like, these are just like the best version of, I don't know if there was a previous Aether Gust. But, like, there were cards that were very similar to Veil of Summer over the years that were just stone unplayable. Yeah. 
but then they tacked to draw a card onto Veil of Summer. Best version ever printed. Saw play everywhere. Banned. Banned. <laughs> I mean, Aether Gust hasn't been banned, but like the fact that Aether Gust doesn't counter and like right, uh, you play the six mana uncounterable Chandra and it's on top of your deck. Mm-hmm. And you're like, no, this was supposed to hit the ground and I was supposed to kill your thing. No, 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 no. Yeah. Like, it doesn't counter. Like, the fact that it gets a spell or, or permanent. Right. Right? Like, that's wild, right? Like, it's just like, yeah, I can either, if I draw it early, I can not hit the battlefield. If I draw it late, I can clear the way for something. Mm-hmm. As opposed to being like, oh, I drew it late. I guess I'm like screwed. It doesn't do anything. Yeah, and I know that it's kind of limited in use case because it only targets red or green spells, um, or permanents, I guess. But it also kind of acts like a remand. Instead of like you drawing the card, it either makes the thing go away forever or takes a, takes their next draw away. I mean, if you played any Timeless... I uh, remember uh, when, like, maybe it, was, maybe it was when Historic was first started and, like, Memory Lapse was in it everywhere. Yeah. Like, this is kind of like Memory Lapse. Similar, yeah. For red and green cards. Mm-hmm. Where they, they get the out of, like, fine, I'll put it on bottom. Right. But, like, sometimes, like, well, I needed that card. I have to put it on top. Right. And just, like, not get a draw step. And it's like, oh, it's, like, blue and, it's only green and red, but, like, I don't know, that's 40% of, like, decks mm-hmm. you're going to play. For sure. And, like, you know, even when Veil, Veil and Aether Gust were in standard with Oko, mm-hmm. all the decks were green. Right. Like, Aether Gust d- uh, did the thing. Yep. And it also got around Veil of Summer. They got it to did. draw the card, but they still had to put their thing away. Mm-hmm. Like, Veil still sees play in, like, modern... And legacy, I've seen They're, Aether Gust in modern lists not not that long ago as well. Yeah, um, like Veil and like Legacy Storm. Like there are like uh, some of the versions of Storm that Bryant Cook has played. Mm-hmm. Um, main deck Veil. Yeah, right. Because like, oh, you're gonna like thought seize me. I'll draw a card. Thank you. Yep. Oh, you're gonna force me. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're <laughs> not. Please you come again. Come again. Thanks, Just bye. seized yourself. Exactly. <laughs> oh, you mind routed yourself with your force of will. That was a three right. for one. Thank you yeah. very much. Um, yeah, so, like, again, like, was it a Veil of Autumn? Was that the card? Yeah, that was the previous version. It just didn't have draw a card on it. Yeah, I don't... Was that one color limited? I think it was. Uh... I'm not 100% sure. I didn't think it was. Maybe it was. Oh, yeah. It was. It was? Yep. Okay. Same card, just didn't have draw card. Yeah, same. Yeah, exactly. Is it Veil of Autumn? Autumn, Autumn's Veil. Autumn's Veil. There we go. Yeah, same card. Spells can't be countered by uh, blue or black spells this turn. And creatures you control. So, like, you got a little bit better, because, like, this is just everything you control can't be targeted. Yeah. So, they, like, maybe if they, like, maybe if it was just Veil of Autumn with draw a card, maybe it's okay, but the fact that it, like, cancels out Thought Seize might be the... I don't know. The draw card is really what did it. Right. Alright, what's up next? Next, we have Kiora, who we kind Which of we, already talked about, yeah, so I don't think we talked we about. To... Yep. Yeah. Um, and then... Did you did you have anything else to no, say here? We're good. All right. Uh, then we have a few that I kind of threw on the list here. Excellent. Now Narfi, I know, like hasn't seen a ton of play, mm-hmm. um, or really competitive play at all. But like this card as an uncommon, I think is kind of absurd, <laughs> just for the fact that this card was a mythic in cons. Oh, God, what was his name? Something Merciless Execution? No, Risen Executioner? Yeah, Risen Executioner. The card was yeah. a mythic. And Narfi, I think, is better. I mean, it buys itself back. Yeah. Let's see here. 
Yeah, so Risen Executioner, well, it was it was one less mana, but it was a 4-3 right. that couldn't block. Mm-hmm. Other uh, zombies you control get plus one, plus one. So this is zombies and snow. Or whatever that matters. And then you may cast it from your graveyard if you pay one more to cast it for each other creature in your graveyard. So, like, Narfi's always three to bring it back. Right. Yeah, like, Narfi is a better card. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about Risen Executioner. Yeah, and like I said, I don't... Risen as Executioner didn't see any play, probably because it's bad. And Narfi really, I don't think, has seen any amount of competitive play. But um, this does raise to the level of, like, this is an interesting card. Like, you wanted to do stuff with it. Oh, yeah. You saw it, and you're like, ooh. Yeah, no, this card's sweet. What can I do with this? I like this card a lot. Just, it's not good. I just like the card. <laughs> and that's okay. Sure. Th- thanks for agreeing with me. I think it's That's okay. okay. <laughs> It doesn't have to be good. It just has to be interesting. And it does fill that role. Yeah, like these three cards are all... The the other two have seen some play, but they are interesting. Like, that's kind of why I wanted to talk about them a little bit. The Mm -hmm. next is Oni Cult Anvil. And this this did see some play, more certainly more than Narfi did. But this is like a super interesting, arguably powerful, uncommon, that, I mean, this could have been a rare not in today's magic but in like if this was a rare in shards block like you wouldn't have thought twice about that i think the thing that separates it from being a rare uh now is that this ability only triggers once each right. turn yeah like uh so and 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 the when one or more artifacts die it leaves uh leave the battlefield during your turn yeah, so, so like your turn. Cause when I think that if uh Cat Oven hadn't been so ubiquitous, yeah, that you this would have like triggered on your opponent's turn as well. Probably. But the fact that like like you just got in these situations where you'd like never got to like attack with cat, because like could you imagine you get the first one one mm-hmm. and you're like block, sack it, make a new make a new one one? Right. And, like, just can never get through on the ground. Mm-hmm. But, like, yeah, like, this is right at the edge where they could see that they were, like, I'm guessing that this card um, had the bottom block of text, the second artifact, deal of damage, you gain a life. Yeah. And had the, like, whenever an artifact dies, make a 1-1. One, one. Yeah. And then they played it. Like, oh and no. <laughs> no one could ever attack on the ground. Yeah. Or someone went like I don't know, some like combination of like easily sackable artifacts and made like six one ones. Mm-hmm. And they were like, Oh no. Okay, we gotta like put some we gotta put some guardrails on this. Yeah. Cause like I'm assuming it wasn't written with this paragraph uh, design with this paragraph. Yeah, it seems very specific to tone it down. Yeah, and then they were like, Oh no. This this is too good. We'll, we'll do this, and then like they played a game and they were like, okay, and only it only triggers once each turn. Okay, problem solved. And they just had a game where like they were attacking with like a shieldred, mm-hmm. and they were just like block sack my thing go, yep, get a one one, next turn block with that one one sack it, and like you're not making any headway with your like giant mythic, right? And they're like, okay, we gotta we gotta fix it against or this give common. Sh- yeah, we either have to fix this or give Shieldred flying. And someone was like, <laughs> no, no, spider, spider lady can't fly. Right. It's like, fine, I'll make it so it only works on your turn. Yep. And then, and the, then the last one to talk about is Witherbloom Apprentice. This card had like uh, a like brief shining moment in modern. Not modern, in legacy. Legacy, yeah. What was that card that like went to like twenty bucks? Uh, Chain of Smog. Yes. Copy um, yourself. Yep, and like just you get to win the game. Yep. On turn three. But which it's is a super interesting fun. design. Uh huh. Like it's like a it, thing that typically doesn't get to happen in uh, black and green. That is like technically within the color pie for those colors. Um, it was just a really interesting card, and it 
like got your gears going kind of like you said about narfi it made you think about building a deck around it mm-hmm. same idea and uh it only broke one card in magic's history which is somehow still seven dollars and ninety cents yeah even though it's been on the list it is still <laughs> seven dollars and ninety cents um but yeah like it was super neat and like it, gets, it was like how can I break this? Oh man, like this is so cool. And the fact that like black and green don't do this is almost like if this was like a blue black card, maybe mm-hmm. or like a red black card. But the fact that it was green was just kind of like weird. Weird. Like I guess like for that set, like the black gave it the magecraft, and then the like lose a life, gain a life was for like the green part of that card, yeah. or like with a balloon strick stick with stick was gaining and losing life. Yeah. But it was like just like an unusual card that like if you told me in like three years they printed some card that broke this, mm-hmm. I'd be like, oh yeah, it seems to make oh, sense. Oh yeah, of course they did. Or like it's some like weird modern horizon four card. Yeah. Like where like R and D forgot this was a card. Mm-hmm. And then like all of a sudden it was like, oh I guess this goes infinite with, or like, you know, could you see like, you know, mana even morphos, mana even, <laughs> or I was gonna say like some weird Three thing, mana that, like two cards, like what is it called, um, like lightning storm, where they have some card that's like if you gain life, yeah. uh, well this is on the stack, make a copy, mm-hmm. and like you just like cast it and like have a way to gain life in response and then it just goes infinite yeah like there's some commander card oh God, that like copies a spell for every time you've cast your commander mm-hmm. but like, it doesn't there's a, say there's a couple that do that but it doesn't say another yeah so it just goes infinite with yourself if you've cast your commander one time yeah it just copies itself like if they mm-hmm. just had some goofy card that was like you know, whenever you gain life, copy the spell. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, you've like, uh, you cast, you cast it and you're just like, uh, trigger, copy it, trigger, copy it. I guess or I win. Whenever your opponent loses life, copy this spell or something. Yeah. And you're like, I, I guess I win the game now. Thank you very much. I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. They got a bunch of zoomers in R&D that forgot about this card. Mm-hmm. So that was the last of the single cards I had to mm-hmm. talk about. Um, I do have just a couple other thoughts. Do you, do you want to cover them now? or Sure. We got a few more minutes here. Give, give, we can give an old school hour and a half long show. All right. Um, the one thing, or the first thing that I wanted to mention is we're talking about the power level and the complexity of specifically uncommons. Mm-hmm. Um, until fire design, can you name a competitive standard deck that was based solely around uncommons? As like the, oh uh, gosh, they were not really. Um, I'm trying like, to think. The closest thing that I can think of was, um, like green white boggles in M14 standard. Okay, I that was a was, little before my. I, I do well, remember playing it. Remember even Rich that, played that? Yeah, even that played voice though, so that's not really like solely. Yeah, but like where like the like if you took voice out of the deck, it still like yeah. did the boggly thing. Like you could think like, you know, uh, scissors like Jes- maybe. Scissors, Just Guy Tokens. Like, you know, it did its yeah. thing. With like stoke the flames, but like it really popped off with like just guy ascendancy. Yeah. Um, but like not a time. Like usually it was like Avison or like three yeah. mana Nissa or like this is the best deck for for siege Rhino. Right. Or like, uh, but I don't like uh green black explore green black mid range. Like the engine of that was like an uncommon into an uncommon and then like jade light ranger like really put it over the top well sure but like the power of that deck was all mythics though 
Like that deck was that had, that deck had a ton of mythics in it. I don't. I I just remember like the kind of the core. I know it had Doom Whisper in it. Yeah. No. They, I guess that, that deck was, Yeah, was a, a big okay. pile of Vraska's Contempt was rare. It, that deck was a big pile of money. I think Vraska's Contempt would be like an uncommon. Yeah. If like he printed, he printed Vraska's Contempt. It would just be an uncommon. Um. Yeah, but, but not a ton. So where I was going was we've had multiple decks since Fire Design that were basically just uncommons. Mm -hmm. Um, The two that popped into my head right off the rip were both an Ikoria block. Maybe you can think of one since then. But we had the Cycling deck. Mm -hmm. That one with, was it Zenith Flare? Mm -hmm. Um, That deck was basically all commons and uncommons, other than the mana base. And the Mutate deck. With the, like... Whatever stag thing or whatever. Suspicious Starix, yeah. Yes. Where like you just like put your whole deck on the battlefield. Yep. And Behold that deck was cards. almost exclusively commons and uncommons. Mm-hmm. I think that like there's And not that they were a... like top tier decks, but that like you wouldn't get laughed out of enough in them if you brought one. Yeah. But like even I think about like, you know, uh there was the like you know, uh, like Bone Crusher Giant, uh, Brazen Borrower, but like you had like the Teamer Adventure kind of like standard deck, but there's also like the Green Black standard yeah. deck that was like Edgewall Innkeeper, Lucky Clover, and the Knight, uh, the the Knight, the uh, oh gosh, the 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 Ramp guy, yep, the big giant, yep, and then the like kind of trash uncommon that was like four mana discard two mm-hmm. as the adventure yeah. so like it was like a mind twist when you had a uh right. lucky clover lucky out clover. and then was like a seven mana like four or four five. that had i think it was a four yeah, five flyer or something if you if they had no cards in hand or something yeah. that deck was not terrible right and was uh pretty uh was pr- like a lot of commons and uncommon mm-hmm. like you know, a lot of like here are these engines. I mean, what about red black sack in pioneer? Oh, sure, absolutely. Like cat oven mayhem, mayhem devil, devil, yeah. Uh, deadly but, dispute, which is a common. Born. Yeah, like those are just all uncommons. Yeah. Right. Like yeah, I mean that's that, in that a, like standard, powerful I format think was almost exclusively commons and uncommons. Yeah, that was really good in standard. Yep. So like, there's been more of like these uncommons are really good and pushed Mm -hmm. and like they're more synergy pieces right a lot of times because they were like there to like prop up a draft archetype Mm -hmm. and so you're able to build like the synergy deck or like the best version of this draft archetype Mm -hmm. in a 60 card format right and like it cohesively goes together so the thing I would like take away from this is for a lot of these cards, and we mentioned it a lot as we were talking about them, they all do a lot of things. Yeah. Which is something that like I think a lot of times in card evaluations, like our eyes glaze over when we get to like the sixth line of text. Yeah. And it makes it hard to parse the fact that Haywire might is a, a speed bump that gains you life, a thing you artifact to hate you can cord for, right. um, all like uh, all these different things, and it's costed like you said. I had never noticed it's just costed like naturalized, mm-hmm. right? Like all of these things where you're like, oh, if I put all of those together, yeah, why would I ever play naturalize? You wouldn't. Why would I? Why would I play Rex Sage? Like, okay, if I care about Elf. Or I care about it being green. Like, if I'm right. like, oh, I'm going to, like, whatever, Summoner is packed for this. But, like, every other reason, like, I'm going to play Haywire Might. Right. Right, because it does all the, just all these little things. And it's, like, even going back to, like, um, Blood Tithe Harvester, right? Right, it's aggressive thing, removal spell. Yep. Card filtering. Yep, it works at every point in the game. And... Sometimes you get all three of those modes on the card. Yep. Sometimes two of them are all you need. Yep. 
and you're just like, oh, this does everything I need it to do. Uh huh. Right. And like, I think it's gonna, it's imperative on like us as your esteemed podcast hosts Ooh. and like uh, players as a whole to be like, okay, let me kind of parse all of these parts mm -hmm. and do these add up to be something good. Yeah. And I, you know, I think what's going to happen a lot is I think there's going to be a lot more like this card has like three different clauses on it. I'm assuming it's good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like think about like sometimes the great big wall of text like doesn't end up being good, but the like I do this thing for free and I do this other thing for free that might matter 10% of the time. And yeah. I do this other thing for free that matters 30% of the time. And you're like, oh, so 100% of the time I want this card. Mm -hmm. And I can just pick which corner case I'm in. Yeah. Like, that was kind of another theme as we were going through these cards also, was cards that like, we had seen and maybe even talked about during our set review episodes. But our evaluations were just a little bit off because we couldn't see that uh blood tithe harvester was relevant at every single point in a game mm -hmm. or that uh sky turtle was relevant to extremely specific decks that we weren't thinking about yeah it is it's one of those things that like i said like it be it's hard yeah when the cards get more complicated yeah to like fully understand all of the different use cases before you play with them and then you're like, oh, now I see like, oh, like the fact that it like is a bounce spell is good. And oh, like here, the fact that I get an uncounterable regrowth is amazing. Mm -hmm. And oh, I care about it in my graveyard for these reasons. Right. Right. Like, and we just, uh, like, it just is so hard to see all those little things add up. Mm -hmm. But like, I think like going forward, looking at cards, it's like, okay, is this are all these abilities built into the cost of the card? Yeah. And I was like, oh no, like I get a mind rot plus a free thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, cause like mind rot with blood is close. Right. Right. It's not like as good as, um, like, you know, go blank, like go blank kind of is like the high water mark, yeah. but like mind rot with make a two, two decay zombie. Right. Is close. Very close. Right, where it's like, oh, they forgot to, like, tack the cost of this piece of cardboard onto this card. Yeah. Right? And, like, there's gonna come a point where they're gonna print a thing that is, you know, shock yeah. with, like, it's a shock, but it makes a blood. Mm-hmm. And we're like, oh, this card's ridiculous. Right. Or it's a it's a shock that, like, makes a, makes a clue or something absurd. And you're like... <laughs> the divination and the shock all in one. Yeah, I can't believe they printed this, but I guess I need to buy all of them. Right. Right? Like, before anyone else realizes that Shockination is too good, <laughs> I need to, like, buy all of these. Um, so, yeah, it's just, like, seeing the... Being able to, like, parse all the pieces, and, like, that's something that, like, as Thunder Junction comes out and, like, you know, sets going forward is... Like a lot of times you see the rares that mm -hmm. you're like, okay. And like sometimes you miss like the vein rippers of the world. Right. Right. But you like see the rares that you're like, oh, that rare is going to be good. Mm -hmm. Or like that rare goes in all the commander decks. So it's $60. Right. Um, but like those uncommons that are like, oh, this could be like five bucks or like this could like make an archetype. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are okay, hard to I see keep... sometimes. Yeah. I should like keep an eye on this or like, you know, Mayhem Devil is okay, and then they print Cat Oven in the next set, and you go like, oh. Oh, yeah, I see. Now I gotta, <laughs> I gotta put all these pieces together. Yeah. So it's like, oh, like, do we have, like, Insidious Roots in this set, and then they print something in Thunder Junction that's just like, oh, this comes back from the graveyard for free for, like, no work. Oh! Yeah. So then this breaks this other card. Okay. Yeah. We get a new Blood so, Guest or something. Exactly. And you're like, oh, like... Cowboy ghast. Yeah. Whenever, whenever a desert comes into play, the t tumble right. ghast, the tumble, tumble that you can't ever tumble. get rid of. There you go. I like tumble ghast. That's good. Yeah. All right. So with all that, I think we got a show. We got a show.
So uh, we are coming up on Thunder Junction. We are. Uh, but if you have any show ideas that maybe we can do before Thunder Junction or get to after, please let us know. Facebook, Discord, artist formerly known as Twitter, and uh, email. All those links are in the description below. Check them out. Yeah, also let us know if you like this sort of episode. Um, I love doing card valuations. I think that's one of my favorite parts of the game is figuring out all the moving parts and determining if they're costed appropriately or what the different breakdowns are, that kind of stuff. So let us know if this is something something you guys enjoy. Maybe we can find a way to to do more of it because, like I said, I think this is one of, one of the I things mean, that's kept me involved in this game for so long. I mean, we could, you know, one, one day do, like, you know, the top commons from, like, Fire Design and Popper or something. And, like, sure. You know, something like that, and just like, oh, here's why these are good. Mm -hmm. Here's what we missed. Yeah. If you guys, but, yeah. if you guys want any of that, or if you got any other ideas, hit us up. Uh, if you're looking to support the show, there's a couple ways you can do it. The first is with our TCG Player affiliate link, casualtryhard.com/tcg. Surf on over there, do your shop, and support the show at the same time. If you want to support us more directly, Patreon.com/casualtryhardmtg is where you can do that. Uh, sign up, chip a couple bucks in, get access to our show notes. You get access to more of us every week, twice the content, because you get our pre-show as well. Yeah. And you help to support us, and we would appreciate it. Yeah. All right. So with that, we'll catch you on the internet. We'll catch you on the internet.